Hey y'all. So I know that with factoring, it can kind of be tricky because when you're in each little section, you're like, ah, oh, I think I'm getting this. Uh, or maybe you just need more exposure to um, all of it to kind of put it all together. So uh, what I'm gonna do in this video is uh, six different problems and we're gonna just walk through how do I approach factoring in general. So if, if I have a problem and it just says factor or factor completely, whatever the instructions are, if it's like, you know, factor each polynomial. Um, but when I, when I hear this word factor, what I need to do first is check for GCF. So I'm going to look for a GCF and a GCF is in common between all the terms, between all of them. Okay. So I'm going to look here and say, okay, well, these two terms, they both have a five in common. They both have an A cubed and they both have a B. So when I take out a five A cubed B from this term, I'm dividing it out. That's the process. When you pull out a greatest common factor, you are dividing. And when I divide this, everything is going to cancel except for the B squared. Okay, and then if I were to divide this by 5a cubed b, everything cancels except for 80 divided by 5 is 16. Now, when I'm looking, now I'm going to count the number of terms. And when I count the number of terms, I'm talking about the number of terms inside the parenthesis if there was a GCF. So not this term, so we don't include the GCF when you're counting the number of terms, I'm talking about what's left, okay? So uh, there are two terms inside of here. So then I'm gonna go to, okay, if there's two terms, it's either gonna be a sum of squares or a difference of squares uh, or nothing. I mean, it could just be that there's a GCF, but I'm gonna look here and say, well, this is B times B and this is four times four. So these are indeed perfect squares. So this is a perfect square and so is this, but this is a sum right here. Because it's a sum, I cannot factor this part right here any further. This is prime. But it's really important to understand that what I started with, the problem right here, is not prime because the, it had a GCF. So prime means that it's not factorable. That this initial problem was factorable. I pulled out a GCF. So Although I can't factor further, I did factor. So the answer to this question would be a cubed b, b squared plus 16. And that is factored completely because this cannot factor any further, but it has a GCF. So I would not call this problem prime. Okay, so now again, I'm just gonna walk through each of these steps. Uh, and we, we checked for nesting already when I checked to uh, factor this, and it, if it can't factor, there's nothing that can factor inside of it either. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna look at this next problem. And again, my first step always is looking for a GCF between all of the terms. So I've got a 16, a 20, and a 24. Well, they all have a four in common. So if I factor out a four, again, when I figure out what's left, what I'm literally doing is I'm dividing each one of these terms by four. Well, 16 divided by four is four, and I have p to the fourth. Well, I didn't actually check for a variable GCF. This has p to the fourth, p squared, no p. So there's no variable GCF here. Uh, 20 divided by four is a negative five p squared. And oh, this needs to be negative. Sorry about that. And uh, 24 divided by 4 is a negative 8. Make sure you change that sign. I copied that down wrong. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now say, again, I'm going to count the number of terms. And when I count the terms, I'm only talking about what's left after I've pulled out the GCF. So what is left inside of here is a three-term polynomial that 
has a coefficient greater than one. So I'm going to use, so I'm going to identify, oh, I'm using synthetic factoring. The process for synthetic factoring is I'm going to take the first step is A times C. Uh, and we're talking about when it's in the form AX squared plus BX plus C, which is exactly what this looks like. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take A times C and that, oh, hey, this is 6. 24 divided by 4 is 6. You guys were like, no! Okay, so A times C is 4 times a negative 6, which is a negative 24. When I factor C, and having that 8 here, that would throw this whole thing off. I'd get 32, and then I'd be beating my head against the wall. So this is where I go back and I check. Uh, 16 divided by 4, 20 divided by 4 is 5. 24 divided by 4 is 6, not 8. Okay, so I get a negative 24 when I multiply A times C. That's my first step. My second step is I'm going to find factors of negative 24 that are going to sum to a negative 5. There's lots of factors of negative 24, but negative 8 and a positive 3 multiply to this negative 24, but sum to negative 5. So that checks out. Okay, so I found the factors that sum to B. The third step is to write them over A. A in this case is 4. And my fourth step is to reduce those fractions. So I'm going to reduce the fraction to a negative 2 over 1, but I'm going to leave a top and bottom. So remember, we want a top and we want a bottom. And the reason why is because each one of these represents a factor. So this can't be reduced. So now I'm going to rewrite these as factors. And these represent the coefficients. So this 1 goes in front, and the sign is going to go behind. And this 4 goes in front, and the sign goes behind. So again, each one of these fractions represents a factor. And now I'm going to say, but what am I talking about here? Well, when I look back up here, I have P's in the front and nothing in the back. But what should each factor have? Each factor should have a P squared. So I have a P squared here. And one P squared is just P squared. And I have a P squared here. Okay, and so these are the factors. But if I said factor completely, I need to remember that I have this GCF right here. This is part of my answer, just like this one was part of the answer. Okay, so I'm going to have 4 times all of this. And again, this last step is step 5, and you're rewriting these as factors. So each fraction represents a factor. Again, I'm just taking this fraction, and it represents the coefficients. Taking this fraction represents the coefficients. How do I figure out that this is a p squared here? Well, I'm going to go back up to this middle term and say each one of these factors have to have whatever this middle term is. If it was an xy, then they each need to have an xy. If it was a p to the fifth, they would each need to have a p to the fifth. Okay, now because this has squareds, I need to check, because these are squared here and here, I need to check these. I need to check for nesting. Remember, nesting is if there's factoring inside of factoring. So uh, when I look at this, I'm going to say, okay, well, this is a perfect square. This is a two-term polynomial. This is p times p. But 2 is not a perfect square. 4p squared is. This is 2p times 2p. But 3 is not a perfect square. So these aren't perfect squares. So they're not a sum or difference of squares. So this cannot be factored further. So I checked for nesting, and there's nothing I can do about it. So here is my final answer when I say factor completely. OK. So uh, again, we're just going to keep going through all sorts of different types of problems and walk through these steps. I can't stress how important it is to evaluate if there's a greatest common factor, count the terms, and then, and then you're going to use the method that I've written here. Uh, if there's four terms, you're going to factor by group. If there's three, you've got all of these different options. But remember that synthetic works for all of them. And then if there's two, then these are your options here. Okay, so uh, this is stuff I would have memorized. 
for the test and for the final. Next problem we're going to do is going to be, let's do Okay, so let's look at this problem here. First step when it's like, hey, your instructions say factor. Okay, well, I'm gonna see, is there a GCF? I've got an A, an A, an A, and an A. Okay, so I can pull an A out of all of these and only an A because these two can't have more pulled out than just an A. Four, eight, and 32 all have four in common, but I can't pull a four out because this one doesn't have a four. There's a B here, a B here, but no B's here. So the only GCF I have here is A. And when I pull an A out, again, I'm dividing each term by A. So if I divided this term by A, then I would just get an AB. If I divide this term by A, then I get a minus eight B. If I divide this term by A, then I get a plus four A. And if I divide this term by A, I get a minus 32. Okay, so that's a GCF. Now I'm gonna count the number of terms. Again, the number of terms are looking at what's left. I don't include the GCF when I'm counting the number of terms. So I'm gonna say there's one, two, three, four terms here. Well, there's four terms, then I'm gonna factor by group. The process for factoring by grouping is I'm gonna group the first two terms and the last two terms. And if I might, I might need to rearrange the polynomial, but for, for this class and for this purpose, uh, right now we probably uh, won't, won't address that. So if I'm gonna group the first two terms, then what I'm gonna do is say, what's in common between the first two here? Well, this is just a B that's in common and what's left is A minus eight. Okay, then I'm gonna look at these two terms and find the GCF. And I'm gonna say there's four is the only common factor and it's gonna be a positive four. And I know it's positive because the sign right here always tells me what sign this is right here. Okay, so when I pull out a four, I'm gonna get A minus eight. All right, well, looking at these, I can see that the GCF here is a minus eight, and I'm going to do a b plus four, and then what is left here, uh, I've got to bring down my GCF, and again, what, how did I get this b plus four? Well, if I divide this term by a minus eight, then there's a b left, and if I divide this term by a minus eight, then there's a four left. So I bring down my GCF and this is factored completely. Uh, checking for nesting. Because each one of these has a, a degree of one, there is no nesting here. So there's nothing we can do to make that more uh, simple. Hold one sec. Okay, so looking at this next problem, uh, again, if you approach every single one of these factoring problems by looking for the GCF, your life is gonna be so much easier. So I'm gonna look at them and say, well, three, 33, and 54. They all have three in common. Just a second. They all have a three in common, but I am going to pull out a negative three because my leading coefficient is negative. So when you're looking for a GCF, watch out for a negative leading coefficient. Okay, so because I'm gonna pull out a negative here, when I divide this by negative three, I get X squared. When I divide this by negative three, I get a positive 11 X. When I divide this by negative three, I get a positive 18. 
sorry, my washing machine was going nuts, so so I had to run to the other part of the house and turn it off. So sorry about that. All right, so uh, now that I've factored out a GCF, I need to count the number of terms. There are one, two, three terms, and then I'm going to look and say. Well, what kind of polynomial is this? Well, this is a x squared term with a coefficient of one. So because it's one, then I can do a hippobutts and say hippobutts, hippobutts, the last number is what times what? Well, there's lots of factors of 18, but we're looking at two and nine. So I'm gonna have a plus two and a plus nine because when they multiply together, they equal 18, and when they add together, they equal this positive 11. So what's gonna go in the front? Well, because the coefficient is one, I'm just gonna dump what's in the middle here into each one of these. In this case, it's x. But if this was, say, x to the sixth and x cubed, then what would go here would be an x cubed and an x cubed. Okay, so um, just be aware that whatever goes right here is whatever degree this middle term is. So we're just going to get x and x. And then I've got to pull down that GCF. All right, so uh, let's do a couple more. Okay, so looking at this first one, I'm gonna say, is there a GCF? Well, there's only a, a constant of 81. This one doesn't even have a constant, and this one doesn't have a variable, so there's no GCF here. I'm gonna count the terms and say, well, there's one, two terms. So my next question is, is this a sum or difference of squares or neither? Well, to see if it's a sum or difference of squares, then both the front term and the back term have to be a perfect square. By perfect square, I mean it has to be some number times itself. Well, nine times nine is 81. X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. So this, these are both perfect squares, and this is a difference. This sign right here says difference. So this is a difference of squares. So this is gonna factor then to nine plus X squared and nine minus X squared. Okay, and you might be tempted to be done here but again, we always want to check for nesting, and we, we especially check for nesting when these are not one. Okay, so uh, I'm going to look inside of each one of these and treat them separately as if this was my original problem. So 9 plus x squared, can this be factored? Well, there's no GCF, and there's two terms here. Is this a perfect square? Yes, it is. 3 times 3, and this is a perfect square of x times x. However, this sign right here is a plus, and this is a stopper. So we do not factor sum of squares. Sum of squares are prime. So this factor that I've already factored in this first layer is prime. So this can't factor any further. That doesn't mean that this whole problem is prime. It means that this won't break down any further. Well, this one has the same numbers, so it's three times three and x times x. But this is a difference, so we have a second difference of squares. So this is that layer of factoring. This is that nesting that we were talking about. Well, how would this factor? This would be a three plus x and a three minus x. So if I factor completely this initial 81 minus x to the fourth, I would get nine plus x squared times three plus x times three minus x. Okay, and this would be factored completely. Again, yes, this is prime, but it doesn't mean the whole problem is prime because I did factor it. I factored it once and twice, actually. I had layers of factoring. So uh, make sure that you don't factor this any further. There's no possible sign combination that will allow you to factor that. That's why it's prime. So we know to stop here because we check this. It can't be factored. This degree is one and this degree is one. So there's nothing more. There's no GCF because we took that out to begin with. 
Okay, this last one we're gonna do, uh, you'll notice when you first look at it, you're thinking, oh my gosh, those are huge numbers. Anytime you think that, I want you to stop and think, is this a perfect square trinomial? But before we do that, let's do the first step of factoring. Uh, I'm gonna factor out a GCF. So I've got 98, 168, and 72. Well, good grief. Um, I know they're at least even, so I don't really know the factors here, so I'm just gonna start kind of dividing. Two and 98 is 49. Two and one, 68 is gonna be 84. Sorry, that's right correctly, two and 84. And two and 72 is gonna be 36. This is seven times seven and these can't factor then any further. So the only uh, constant GCF here is two, but now I'm gonna go to my variables and say there's a W, a W, and a W, so I can take a W out, because this one only has one to take out. So when I divide this first term by a two W, I'm gonna get 49, because we can see when we divide it by two, we're left with 49, and I'm gonna get W squared. When I divide this by two, I'm gonna be left with an 84, and just a W, and when I divide this one by two, I'm gonna be left with a 36, and the W's cancel out. Okay, so now I'm going to look inside of here. I'm gonna count the terms, one, two, three, and I'm gonna say, well, this is definitely has a coefficient greater than one. So I could use synthetic factoring, which you're totally welcome to, but when you use synthetic factoring, if you do 49 times 36, I don't have a calculator handy, but I do know this is gonna be a big freaking number, right? So let's say, okay, that's 54, 35, 29, zero. Um, do I have any takers for factoring 1674? Anybody wanna figure out the factors of 1674 that are gonna to sum to negative 84? If this feels overwhelming to you, that should be a clue to stop and say, wait a second, is this a perfect square trinomial? Well, how can I tell? Well, we're gonna do exactly what we just did to, to these difference of squares and say, well, if the front and back are supposed to be perfect squares, is this a perfect square? Well, sure, this is seven times W and seven times W, something times itself, yep. Okay, what about the back? This is six times six. Okay, so can't haven't quite determined whether or not this is a perfect square trinomial, but Front and back are perfect squares. Now I need to verify that this middle term is double a times b. Well, this is a right here, and this is b right here. a times b, or seven times six, is 42. Double that is 84, and this is indeed 84. So this inside of here is a perfect square trinomial. Well then the way that's gonna factor is I'm going to use this formula right here. And again, this sign matters. This is a negative. So that tells me that the sign inside of this squared is gonna be negative. Well, what's gonna go right here? Well, that's gonna be the root of the a squared. What times what was a squared? Well, that's gonna be a seven W. And what's gonna go right here? Well, that's gonna be the root of the b squared. That's gonna be six. And the sign is this sign right here. Okay, and we can't forget that we have this GCF that we need to bring down. So I've got a two W here. Now, a question here is I need to check for nesting. Well, this W is to the first power and this W is to the first power. And I actually have two of these factors. Remember that this means that there are two of these. Uh, but regardless, if I can't factor the one that's exactly the same, I can't factor the other. So I can't factor any further. So after checking for nesting, I'm confident that this is factored completely. So this is the end of the, my review video for putting it all together and kind of just what do I look for when I'm looking at all different polynomials. Again, this, you should have all of this memorized. You should know what prime is. You should know the process. And you should follow this process like religiously, like very systematically. If you do, you will be able to factor any polynomial that you're given. Uh, there's four terms, use factor by grouping. Three terms, you can always just use synthetic factoring. But again, ooh, gross. So understanding a perfect square trinomial is really important.
and then we've got the sum and difference of squares. So hope this is helpful for y'all. And uh, the next uh, video I'm going to talk about um, is going to be on exponents.